on the 2012-2013 budget to order. Are we ready? Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jeannie, please call the roll. Burke? Here. McGrath? Here. Miller? Here. Lays? Here. Keller? Here. Sullivan? Here. And Joanne Graham by phone? Joanne, can you hear? Just acknowledge it, you're here. Here. Okay, the purpose of the hearing is the public hearing of 2012-2013 Main Town High School District 207, the North Suburban Educational Region for Vocational Education and Serve Budgets, uh, report on the publishing of legal notices. Uh, Mary can confirm the legal notices were published in the following papers, Plains Journals, Niles Journal, Park Ridge Falcon Journal, Prospect Heights Journal, Mount Prospect Journal, and Rosemont Journal. Yes. Okay. Um, and the, Tentative budget's been on display since July 2nd and thereafter um, at the Administration Center here at 1131 South Dean Road, Park Ridge, Illinois. Correct. Okay. Um, are there any public members wishing to come forward at this time to direct questions or make statements concerning the budget? Are there any board members who wish to make comment on the budget? Any budget? Mary, is there anything you would like to say on the tentative budget? Um. We're going to be updating it in the final budget based on hopefully some final state allocations, which includes some proration of general state aid. And um, with property tax bills going out earlier than they ever have in the last, what, 40 years, um, we'll have some accruals that may be a little different this year, so I'll have to watch how we've got the budget for property taxes split for the 2011 budget. We'll have 55% accrued for last year, which is something a little new. I mean, we've got about $23 million in property taxes in the month of July. And that has never happened in my career in schools. So it just, there may be some shifting and timing differences that will update the final budget. Okay. I don't, I don't mean to be rough, just the meeting. The uh, minutes duly reflected that I voted against the uh, budget in the last meeting because of the uh, proposed tax increase. So I'll just restate because it is a public hearing that. Uh, any other comments? <clears throat> Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Burke. Is there a second? Second. Second. Color. Any questions or comments on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Um, motion carries unanimously. Uh, the public hearing is adjourned. Okay. We shall call to order. <coughs>
housed our own people, but then we also sold outside seats. So we did that again and hope to continue to grow that in the future and, and make that. Uh, was that Cooperative Learning? Cooperative Learning was one piece of that, uh, among some other things. Um, but uh, we hope to continue to do that on an annual basis. So is that successful and all attended? Yeah, and Barb can tell you how successful it's been. So, one that we really had a lot of outside people for were our Google academies, yeah. um, and we had a good entrepreneurial effort on the part of our tech staff because uh, there were a lot of people who want to pay uh, a nice sum of money to come and become a Google certified trainer. And Aida Iowa and some of the other teachers um, delivering that to uh, anyone who wants to come and sign up. Um, but we've had other workshops this summer um, using some of the profits from last summer actually to pay for the cost of them this summer. So we're, we're in a nice place in terms of being able to support our professional development. We tell the board this without the time, but I don't think any of us ever really pay as much attention to as we ought to. But in Google Certified Trainers, for example, we believe we have more than any organization in the world, and that's something to be very proud of. Uh, for Johnson Johnson Cooperative Teacher Leaders, I know that we have more than anybody in the world. So those are the types of things that we've been working on in terms of teacher leadership to build our own capacity within 207. I think that's, we're just now sort of reaching a spot where I think we can really, really um, harness the things that we've been working on for the last 10 years continue to get better. Is, is, there, is there a concise and readily available report that, uh, of events that happen this summer of the activities that, that kind of exist that you could share with the board so we kind of have a better idea what's going on? I can pull one together for yeah. you. And not ask for a lot of expenditure. Right. I'd just like to know sure. how many of these we held, how many people attended, mm -hmm. uh, if it was a majority of people from our district courses, a lot of people from outside. Mm -hmm. Whether it was teachers, I was going to ask the president of Google Bank, whether it was more administrators, more teachers, but things like that that might be an existing report or some sort of summary that you might have done that way. Yeah, I can do that. We have all that data, it's just putting together in the whole summer. I know, I figured. And that's, and that's a good exercise anyway. Any other comments from board members? <coughs> uh, gentlemen, um, welcome. We're in communication, so you want to address the board, now's a chance, or anything you want to say? Yeah, my name is Ernie Fry. I just came to. Uh, See what the uh, uh, board has to say about the uh, property tax increases. That's okay. Um, public, one to start, Sean? The, the, one. the public hearing uh, was already held, so the public hearing is done. We are actually in the regular meeting okay. of the board, but that doesn't mean that we won't turn around and, and address your questions. Um, this is a review of the tentative budget, and as Mary said, there will be revisions in the uh, in the budget before the final comes before the board for passing. Um, this year, uh, earlier than the previous 40 years, the uh, tax bills have gone out, and of course the county received money, and therefore we're dealing with more money, so there's some uh, revenue and accounting changes that will have to be made. Um, and I won't speak for Ed, but you can turn around and say what you said. Actually, I, I don't think my opinion is that important. I think what, what you're asking, Mr. Fry. Is, is there an opportunity to address the board? Is that what like, you'd like to do? Well, I would, because, because I, I think we can easily provide an opportunity. We're going to have two or three more steps on this budget. We're going to have plenty of opportunities. Um, or, Sean, would you feel that you I don't agree? But he, he asked he asked for the board's comment on the property taxes. Yeah, true. So, but uh, I think as, as everybody knows, or everybody realizes, that there's uh, uh, a significant amount of money that is Tax shortfalls, and I don't think it is uh, in the board's position to provide pay raises for, for people. Uh, I don't think the city council should be providing pay raises in an economic crisis that we suffer. And I think that the board should uh, uh, be a little bit more uh, tighter about how they appropriate. Methodologies for education. Uh, uh, you know, one methodology that you see in the universities, of course, is large auditorium type teaching with uh, teachers' right. needs. And uh, uh, instead of having you know, two or three physics teachers, you have one major physics teacher and uh, uh, Those are other methodologies. 
technologies of educating individuals that might reduce the costs of education here in the South. So, I mean, those are things that influence the cost of education. And we have to have an open discussion about how we're going to We're going to close the budget deficits that we have and, uh, and, and take care of this emergency crisis that we've undergone over the last couple of years and is continuing. And I think there's a lot of people, a lot of taxpayers, who are, are, are uh, upset about continuing having their property taxes increased year after year. Okay. Um, as Ed said, there are a number of other steps before the final budget. I would ask uh, that there are comment cards by the front door if you could fill your name and your address out just so Jenny can get it for the record. Right. And Mr. Pryor, if you don't mind, um, if you would call the office. I actually, I saw the copy of the letter you sent in July and, and uh, Mr. Sullivan was on vacation, but I have a couple of comments to some of the specific things. One of the things you mentioned was, um, you know, Hiring some younger teachers. We had about 34 retirees this year. We replaced 20 something of them with young, newer teachers. So, to your point that you mentioned in the letter, we are trying some of those strategies. The other, the other thing that we're looking at, in addition to, uh, you know, some of the things that you mentioned, are things like online courses. So, we're very interested in uh, a lot of the ideas you're talking about in terms of moving forward for the next 10 years and changing the model and trying to make it a more sustainable model. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about. Can I make one other comment? Um, you, I don't recall, frankly, whether you sent all the board members a copy of the letter that, that was just referenced, but you should know that all of our, all seven of our uh, board email addresses are available online. They're not hard to find. Ms. Dr. Walls would be happy yeah. to show you how to dial us up. So if you have further comments or further things that you would like to make in a written statement, uh, we do read them. And I'll be happy to get a copy of the letter if this is a fine bill. I'd like to see it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and feel free to call because I, I would like to have an opportunity to chat with you a little bit too. Thank Eric, you. since you came in after we started, is there anything you want to say? Okay. Um, monthly status of finances, Mary? In your report is the June financial statement on a cash basis. We are in the process of going through the accruals right now. On a cash basis, um, revenue was at 101% of budget, which is good. And expenditures were at 98% of budget, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> so we anticipate um, posting a slight surplus. I don't imagine that the accruals will be vastly different than in past years, so that we should stay within that range of between a $2 to $4 million surplus for the year ending on June. 30th, 2012. Um, I'll entertain any questions that anybody has in the June financial statements. I, I have really one question for you, Meyer. When I look at the, I don't see the total, you know, it looks like it's education fund and by fund balance. And I'm talking about this one, you know, the, the first page of the graph. Okay. That shows 101%. I and mean, you can do the math in that amount, but it is. Do you want us to add a total? I mean, this is the. Is, is it in here somewhere? I'm afraid I missed nope, it. would show exact, exactly what the total overall budget is and what the percentages are. Sure. If you, it's not in graph form, but it's on the next couple of pages where if you look at like the revenue report, you can see the budget this, this amount. One here. Yes. Keep going one more page. Okay. See, it says revenue report at the top. So you have the budget and amount the by fund. Right. It's not in the graphs, but we can certainly add, but I think when we add it to the graph, we're going to skew the size, which is what we were trying not to do. Because when you combine all the funds now, you'll have one single graph that's 150 million. Yeah, I don't even need the graphs. I was just, when, when I originally suggested this was a good way of showing it in a month, month, and I know it's kind of irrelevant at the end of the, at the, end of the year, which is what this is, so it's kind of year end. But starting with the new year, if the first column were to, sh were to show the, the percentage of the overall budget, all things added together, to me that would be easier. To to say. I, I frankly don't see where there's percentages shown. 101 percent is the number I'm looking for. Um, maybe, maybe they're showing by individual fund, not in total. Okay, it's total about 102 percent is the number. Correct. Percent number. Well, okay, but Ed, 
And if you, if you look at this, I can't since I don't have that, but it's financial report revenue. That shows you that shows you your revenue being 101. But that's for the year. You show that a month month basis and comparison years like the years past. For example, next month will be different because you're going to have Correct. the first month. So that's, that's what I'd like to say. But well, that's what we're trying to do with the graphs is to show. And what I like to see in the graph is the overall. So I don't have to add them all across to see what, what the totals are. Well, in, in terms of GASB requirements for fund accounting, it requires us to break them up by fund. Oh, I'm not against that. So, I mean, we could run a separate spreadsheet for you, but one of the normal reports that we create is not one that would have all funds combined. So, if you, if you want us to add them up. Yeah, I, I, I can continue to do it if you think that's more efficient. I, I just think that show, what, what we originally asked for, Sean, was like on a month to month basis, the percentage uh, received versus budget after the last three years. So, it shows it that fund, but it doesn't really show the overall. Now, I know the education fund is most of it, so you can kind of get the picture of the education fund. But it seems to me it would be clearer right. we'll if, you, if you show total. Okay. Any other questions? Instructional services, Barb? Um, I don't have anything to see. Are there any questions for Barb? You missed the wrong report, though. Yes, you, you know what? Adam, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> 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 I know. I was just like, oh, I'm sorry. But as I said to the superintendent, when he, when he told me it was 104 degrees here, and I snapped him a picture of the thermometer in camp, and it was 78 degrees, and he asked what it was on my agenda, and I snapped a picture of my hammock, and I said, that's my agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had been here. And I will I say, really it's do. really <laughs> but, but, Barb, I'll set up an individual meeting with you so you can... You can I'm here. It. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Other items, uh, monthly update on FOIA requests. Uh, to receive, to process. Okay, thank you. Okay, on the consent agenda, is there any desire to pull anything out from the consent agenda? Okay, we're going to have a motion on the consent agenda 5, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Is there a motion? So Luke, Burke, and Lays. Um, and I will be abstaining on A, but I'll be not going to call it out, please. Burke? Yes. McGrath? Aye. Keller? Yes. Miller? Aye. Graham? Graham. Lays? Aye. Sullivan? Aye, with an abstention on A since I wasn't here. Motion carries. On the consent agenda. Um, six, intergovernmental agreement, North Cook Intermediate Service Center. Recommendation to Board of Education entering into an agreement with North Cook Intermediate Service Center. So it took ISC for the 2012-2013 school year beginning July 1, 2012 and June 30, 2013 to provide a safe schools program designed to meet the needs of students identified as eligible for such services based on Northbrook Young Adult Academy eligibility criteria cost of $388,562.79. Details are found in the attendance. Motion, please. Keller. Second? Second. Second. Brad. Questions or comments on the motion? I not directly on it, but I'd like to know if in the future we could consider including some of these kids home. If we could okay, I, I, I'm prepared to speak to this specifically, and I can tell you that North Cook we've used for a long, long time. Uh, these are typically students who, uh, were we to follow an expulsion <coughs> procedure, would be eligible most of the time for expulsion from school. We don't do that. We typically use an, an, an abeyance. Um, procedure, send them to North Cook, they, they have an opportunity to continue to earn credits, graduate, and then many of them actually come back to their home school. Now, when Mary and I started, we were billed by, by North Cook for 50 seats. We reduced that in year one to 44, reduced it last year to probably 40. This is reflective of 28 seats, so I'm just trying to give you some scope here. In four years, we've reduced from 50 seats. They bill you up front kind of based on your last year's service. Um, so what that's indicative of is exactly to Donna's point. We've actually been sending fewer kids there, trying to house them in our ARC program, but I will tell you this. 
the North Cook program on a <coughs> per pupil basis is actually less expensive than our than our program. I was going to ask about that. You know, I, uh, I was really surprised when I saw the number of eleven thousand. Well, let's say twelve thousand for yeah. second rounding. We're at thirteen five, thirteen six. We're hiding it closer to 15, but, but part of that is that this, part of what makes the North Cook um, advantageous is there is a state grant associated with that that helps keep some of the cost down. Um, and so we've, you know, we've had a good relationship there and, and our kids have been well served. Now these are students, and this is an important point for the board to understand, the vast majority, in fact, most years probably 100% of these kids, these are non-special ed students who, frankly, if the board chose to, could follow the special expulsion procedure and put them, you know, they, they could be responsible for their own education. So this is the, I think, good work of the board in terms of really putting some teeth into making sure kids follow through and track through to graduation. Well, we probably don't say when I bring them back to get better education, but it doesn't sound like, and it sounds like we're about 35, 40 percent. Yeah, it, de it, it depends on the economy of scale you can gain. I think we've got some capacities in ARC, for example, where we have really, really small class sizes where we can afford to put some more kids into those classes without adding another section. So we have some economy of scale uh, metrics that we think we can still harness, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But that's one of the one of the attractive things about Pam Cassie, who, who has joined us, is her background, particularly with students with IEPs, of bringing them back into districts and because when you get some of those outplacements, they are incredibly expensive. So we're going to really attack that issue and try to uh, reduce our cost in those areas. Yeah. If, if, you know, 15 grand, did you say 15 is where? All in's about 14. They do a $2,000 assessment for each for student us, that comes for us, in. Was 15. For us, us about 15. Yeah. So what, what do you think a ballpark for the cost of the art kids would be? Would be double or triple? The art kids, it's, it's definitely higher because there's because there's a small number now we have lowered the cost on that in the last couple of years we've significantly lowered the cost because we yeah. yeah but we've but we've lowered it we've lowered that cost from I know three years ago because we've increased the student load without increasing staffing significantly over there now the the North Cook kids because they're not special ed we don't have to pay transportation they have to find your own way there, correct? Right. <coughs> so our total cost is about twelve thousand. It's well, it's about fourteen. The <coughs> a first time so student, so they, they do an assessment yeah. there, and it's 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 been a pretty good program. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing about the agreement. This is substantial. Um, Mary probably you would be the person to address this. Substantially the same agreement as we had with them in prior years. Yes. Yeah, the you know, the difference, the only two differences are the number of seats and the rate. Okay, but the, the, the operative terms are? Yeah, the terms are. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any other comments? Can you now call the roll? Miller? Aye. Burke? Yes. Yeah. Lays? Aye. McGrath? Aye. <coughs> Graham? Yeah. Peller? Yes. Sullivan? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Yeah. Seven. Uh, the insert budget was placed on display July 1, 2012. The budget contains an estimate for amounts available in each fund separately and of expenditures for each in the amount of $1,497,807. The recommendation is for education of Maine Township High School 207, acting as administering, administering district for the North Suburban Educational Region for Vocational Education, insert, adopt the insert budget resolution presented in accordance with the recommendation of the insert for the motion, please. Second. McGrath, second Peller. Questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, call the roll. Lays? Aye. McGrath? Aye. Peller? Yes. Miller? Aye. Burke? Yes. Graham? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. The resolution to approve the rating rubrics for librarian positions. The Board of Education approved the adoption of the attached consensus rubrics submitted by the Teacher Rating Task Force, which provides definitions for the new rating system used for certified staff serving in specialist positions of the librarian beginning with the 2012-2013 school year. Their motion please. Mm -hmm. Color, second? Second. Second to draft. Questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, call the roll. Burke? Yes. Graham? Mm -hmm. Peller? Yes. Sullivan? Aye. Burke? Yes. Graham? Aye. Miller? Aye. Lays? Aye. Peller? Yes. Sullivan? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, approval of bids and awarding contracts. Uh, 
about what this specific one is with, with Talvin. Um, we have a growing uh, population of students with autism, as does everybody. Um, one out-of-district placement for an autistic student is by itself about double what this contract is. So one of the things that we're really trying to do here, cutting through this and, and understanding what we're trying to achieve, is, is do a better job of coaching within those departments. We've got some newer, younger people working there. It takes a lot of skill, experience to really manage that program at a high level. So we think it's an investment that in the long term will help us be able to serve more of our students here, reduce out-of-district placements uh, of students with autism. That's really what, what we're going after here. I think that would be really helpful for yeah. that information yeah. in, in advance, you know, yeah. In the whereas clauses of the contract spelled out, you know what what the district is trying to achieve and, and why we're contracting with um, with uh, the individual to get the services. Um, that's very helpful. I think plus it provides a record for um, for the board that you know that, that we addressed and looked at all of that information when we when we uh, entered into the contract. Okay. My view was I was finding myself somewhat envious of uh, Dr. Talbot's hourly rates, but. Um, I would assume, and I'm sure the answer to this is yes, we did, is that this has been vetted against any of the 
do this with yes, would, would be charged for somebody of comparable stature and that you've looked at that so you know we'd, we'd love competitive betting on you can't do it on autism specialists but just asking generally for the for the board what the pricing looks like to you for his person, for his caliber, uh, working on an international and national level, national level consultants are, you know, within that range. Um, his whole goal is to fade the service and to help us um, learn the methods that, that we need to have to meet student needs and to be, quite frankly, defensible. He will initially serve over, you know, 60 students. And if we entered into um, this methodology, if, if we had to provide this methodology outside the school day because we couldn't provide it during the school day, then it would be quite costly. So we need to provide it during the school day as the research um, sets. And many um, parents who are in the know about students with autism or emotional disabilities know that this is an important method. So on all four of these, your views that these are really market rate, given everything, given the credentials, given the needs. So given the credentials. And additionally, I have researched the area, and I have not been able to find school-friendly approach to apply behavioral analysis where it permeates the student's school day. And um, so that, that's what we need to do. And we want to grow our own staff and develop our own staff. And we were very clear about that, making sure that, I mean, we're not against bringing in a consultant from time to time as needed, but one of the things we want to do in this district, and I think we've done a good job of it, is making sure that when they walk away, we've built our own capacity to lead our staff from that point on so we're self-sufficient, and that's one of the things Pam is going to try to achieve with this. Um, Berkman, I have a motion to second. Can I get a motion and a second to table this <laughs> Um, the motion is to, is to table the agreement with Dr. Mitch Calvin until September meeting. Um, any questions, comments, or motion? Um, you don't need approval on the form, but you want to do the, no, the process of the That's within the administration. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to table. Motion to table. Uh, opposed to table. Motion carries unanimously. Um, next item is uh, Board of Education contract with Ms. Du and Nagin. I discussed some associates aim to provide collaborative practices in coaching and general special education staff to team teach in a regular education environment. Consultation services will be conducted over 14 days during the 2012-2013 school year at a cost of $21,000 plus travel expenses to be billed separately at the state rate. Details are found in the appendices. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Heller. Questions or comments on the motion? I know that the expenses are built at the state rate. Do we have a ballpark estimate of what the costs are going to be for the uh, expenses? Because these these uh, are here to be in Texas. Texas. Right, right. I contacted Stetson and Associates, and they did write me back that the state rate in Illinois is anywhere from twenty-five to thirty-five dollars. Per, for per diem, so that would be their meals, etc. And then hotel rates, uh, she generally stays in a Best Western or a hotel uh, similar. Okay, and uh, airfare, we have restrictions on airfare, uh, or does the state rate address the, the kinds of things that we're looking at there? I mean, well, this is there is more detail here about the services that will be provided. I, I still don't like this one particularly. Um, and so my suggestion is, is that we get a standard independent contractor's agreement form and then we fill those in which will answer all these questions. Other than that, do you see a reason not to go forward with this at this time? Uh, no. Uh, any other questions or comments? Glad to get that. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, call the roll. Miller? Aye. Burke? Yes. McGrath? Aye. Lays? Aye. Graham? Yes. Peller? Yes. Sullivan? Aye. Um, Allied Health Professionals Inc. Occupational Therapy Services is the recommendation of the Board of Education enter into a contract with Allied Health Professionals Inc. 
provide occupational therapy services for students for their individualized educational programs, IEPs for the 2012-2013 school year at a rate of $72 per hour for a minimum of 22.5 hours per week and 37 weeks of the year. Details are found in the appendices. Motion, please. Heller, second. Second. Second, Burke. Questions or comments on the motion? This is I, I have a couple of questions, of course. Uh, this one actually is direct to uh, Mary. Um, the, there's an independent contractor agreement here, uh, pretty short, but you know, in terms of fairly favorable to us. Um, do we have, are you comfortable with the level of um, insurance? Insurance is okay given the level of exposure because it's just actually and um, can someone speak to why we are engaging these services at, uh, in, in an independent contractor yes. um, at this time? Yes. Uh, this is related to the dissolution that's at okay. where we used to hire OTPT, so this is basically doing some outsourcing. So again, we're looking for other ways to uh, uh, limit the board's exposure on things beyond just the hourly rate, but benefits in particular where we say with, with this type of approach. Any other questions or comments on the motion? No, I, I, I think you know the contract issue is interesting. For example, this one prohibits us from hiring that vehicle, which you know, I don't think that's what we want to do. I, I thought we wanted to for a month of time, but you know, again, what are we? I mean, this is going to be. This is actually a contract, but this is more so than the first two. I guess the second one was sort of a contract. I don't have a problem with that. I, I just think that you know, I think we have a standard form, which is what Sean is suggesting that would. Yeah, like I'd like to be a more standardized form can help us. I think we were doing that. And then we had the same problem, so therefore we developed a standard form and any exceptions to the standard form that we require to turn to you, but they can turn around and use the standard form and they fill in the duties and so on and so forth. It will get reviewed by the board as appropriate. So I'd recommend something like that. So I'll give it to you. Uh, so, um, on, our, on our prohibition against hiring, is it it's just for a period of one year? So which cancel the contract, we have to wait a year to hire someone who was providing services under the contract. It's uh, part of paragraph four. Yeah. One thing that really makes the contract easy to follow is the 48 hour notice yeah. cancellation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can screw up everything else. You like that. Yeah. You can at least get out of it. Yeah. 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 I, I, would, I would think for a lot of professional services. I, 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 you know, when I look at it now, it's mutual. So what if they walk out of that and we are, we are required under our IEPs to provide these services to students? Well, they have an incentive not to, and uh, so. Uh, but yes, that's the risk. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, the, 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 I, I put more like 30 to 60 days, just, you know, in the template. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'd like us to have, you know, certainly more ability to get out of the contract, if at all possible. Um, that the, especially a provider who would be, the more challenging it is mm -hmm. to replace that provider, the more uh, difficult it should be for them to just walk away from it on, on, on a notice, because you know, we have to pay significantly more to obtain a replacement provider, that, that uh, is certainly to the district's disadvantage. Any other questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, call the roll. McGrath? Aye. Heller? Yes. Burke? Yes. Lays? Aye. Miller? Aye. Graham? Yes. Sullivan? Aye. Motion carries the name um, Hank, Robert Half Technologies, temporary Java programmers that the Board of Education entered a contract with Robert Half Technologies for two temporary job programmers for development of student information system reports and an extended integration and procedures for up to 1,800 hours of work at a rate not to exceed $45 per hour. Compensation will be invoiced weekly based on the contracted hourly work performed and may be canceled at any time. Details may be found in the appendices. Motion, please. Heller, second. Second. McGrath. Questions or comments? Can you explain the need for these programmers? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when we purchased the student information system last year and rolled it out halfway through the school year, uh, it comes with a set canned set of reports, many of which need to be customized to meet the needs of the way we do business here <laughs> educationally. And then there's a whole other set of reports that don't come in a canned product that we've developed in the other student information system over a period of decades that uh, our, you know, our end users need and want. And uh, just a whole staff of work that 
is, as I explained to the cabinet, it's kind of like laying carpet when you build a house or putting in plumbing. You're going to do it once, it's going to be there, it's just going to be there from there on out. The problem is we need to get all this done right now. Um, I don't have the manpower on staff to get it all done in a timely fashion. So this is for 1,500 hours total. Mm -hmm. um, so the two programs, programmers would provide approximately 900 hours of evenly split. Um, is this part of the technology budget or part of the budget for this uh, the student information system, or where does this fall in the budgeting of technology? It will be a final budget. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not part of the technology budget that we looked at during yeah. the No, no this would be in addition to that. So it's about another 90000 close to $90,000. A uh, little, we're, we're well, trying to stay under 81, yeah. $81,000, $80,000 that we didn't budget for, we did right. not bought for it. Um, and when did we become aware of the need for all this customization? Well, we've known about it uh, since the beginning. We thought we'd be able to keep up with it since sort of the last 18 months. We've known that we would have to add on additional reports, procedures, data stuff into it. Uh, we hoped that on our own staff we would have had the capacity to do it, but it's proven that we don't have the capacity to do this in a timely fashion. I could have it all done within the next two years, but um, that will put an impact on the educational process and what we use these for. So in July, as a calendar, we talked about, you know, what the teachers need to start the school year and how to do. And it's kind of like, they need the report, you know. And can you give an example of pressing need for a report that would have had to be delayed? Is it well, there's a variety of, yeah, there's some, example. Well, one example is like a, we have several data integration and export procedures where you have one system that needs to talk to our student information system like the auto dialer. So uh, every night there needs to be a process that goes into our system, pulls out all of the changes that have happened in names, addresses, enrollment, and then ship that over to the auto dialer system. And it's an automated process that needs to happen every day. So a uh, procedure has to be written in one system, in the student information system, to pull that data out, and then written in the other system to push it back up so it's available. And then has to run on a nightly basis, or I have to have somebody do that each day. Once it's set up, it's set up, it runs, it runs uh, you know, forever. But somebody has to do that to begin with. And there's a stack. Of, of over 50 things like that um, on top of all of the stuff that will start coming from staff and teachers and everything else once the school year starts. Um, so we're kind of bad. Can we, uh, I mean, that's obviously an administrative issue. As I've talked about the impact on, on teachers and students. Mm -hmm. You made an example of some of those. Well, that one is also stretches into teachers and students because the, the power of that auto dialer is that we can set it up when things happen in classrooms, like uh, a student is absent and a parent hasn't called in, a phone call can go home reminding, alerting the parent that the, the student hasn't shown up and can be called in. Um, so that does impact instruction. It also helps our secretarial staff with man hours and those kinds of things. And then there's other reports, like data analytics reports, that help uh, our professional learning communities and, and those kinds of groups look at student data, track students' attendance, discipline reports, grading issues, all of those kinds of things that need to come out in a variety of filters, reports, uh, data analytics that compare data sets to each other. All of those are possibilities within the system but need to be programmed, set up, tweaked to, to match our needs. Um, I'm assuming there's some kind of priority placed on the projects that mm -hmm. need to be programmed. Yes. Um, and does this 1,800 hours cover all of the stuff that we need done? We believe so. Um, is there any of that to be moved back into um, our in-house capacity? I don't have the in-house capacity. I have the in-house capacity. I have one person that can do these things on top of all of his other job responsibilities. I don't have the in-house capacity to do these in a timely enough fashion that they would be done 
before the school year. Well, the skill set's there, but not the. Uh, yeah, I have the skill set. I just don't have. I have, I have one person with the skill to do these things. I don't have. I can't work in eighteen hundred dollars in the next five months. We've got a lot of experience in contracting out because you know your, of course your choice is maintain the staff and have the fear that they're sitting around not working full capacity or contract out forty five dollars an hour is actually a pretty reasonable. Rate. It is a pretty reasonable rate. It's just I disappointing that we've known about it for eighteen months. This is the first time that the board's been told we don't have this capacity. Well, actually, this is the second. We've had another consultant in prior to this doing some work. Uh, this past year. It was, yeah, we, we had another consultant at the end of the last school year. And that came to the yeah, well, we're not quite as big as... as but, the, but the analogy, you know, Hank's using in terms of a house with plumbing and the difference is, this is more like carpet. And the problem is you put it in there and then it wears out and it needs upgrading. So mm -hmm. this is this is one of those things that anytime you're dealing with IS, it's one of those consistent changers. I, I just, I just, I would appreciate if we had known sooner that we didn't have this capacity that, you know, we're kind of running behind here for a while, you know, year and a half that we know we've had these upgrades and now we... Well, to, to be fair, up until the system was set and up and running and we could really dig into it and get into it, which, you know, wasn't until the beginning of second semester, so February of this year, that we could really dig in and get a feel for at what pace could we move within the system itself. Um, so that's when we reached out in April, May-ish to get in some help to get us through the end of the school year. Uh, and then when we looked at all the outstanding projects over the summer and kind of re-looked at the project plan, that's when I took it to the cabinet and, and asked for some additional help. So it's, it's an evolving process. Just another eighty something thousand dollars on added on to the technology budget that you know I'm just looking at, and every time it just I mean, it just never seems to uh, stop. Get stopped. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem to be an end to it. Uh. I've got well, the same concern. Just just sort of getting out. I feel that the you know that there's never enough technology, and that you can keep spending or at some point put on the brakes. Uh, I mean, I know we're from a very high tech budget to a very low tech budget. Well, it seems to me that we're going back in the direction of the tech budget that's higher than we ever had. So I just, you know, it would be, I mean, do we need a five-year plan? Do we need, I mean, it just, I'm not questioning it because I'm not smart enough to question whether we need two Java programmers. I don't know. I can't do it. I can't help it. Um, but I kind of agree with the thought that we need comfort that the decisions are being made that, you know, we had this talk actually when we mm -hmm. do Cadillac, Chevy, or you know, subcontract, uh, and then and one of the things that we talked about in, in the committee that, that, that we looked at it. So I, I think that's the concern I have. I, I feel especially unable to really comment on whether this is or is needed, but I sort of agree that we need to keep an eye on the budget on the bottom line. Is that, is that we voted on Chevy that night, didn't we? We did. Yeah. yeah. We voted on the Chevy. And, um, and the budget that, that we did bring is, and, and we did bring this up when we passed the temp budget is the amount allotted covers replacing at a regular level and at and a, a constant level the technology we have in-house. Whenever we try to add something onto that, that will not fit within the budget we have. And the budget that we're at is at the levels or close to it before I, the year before I got here. So we're, we're kind of right back to, to where we were about six years ago. So it's, I know we had a peak there, and then we dipped down, and now we're kind of at that that level we were at before. Any other questions or comments on the motion? Okay, we have a motion to second. Please call the roll. McGrath? Aye. Uh, Burke? Yes. Blaze? Graham? <coughs> yep. Heller? Yes. Miller? Aye. Sullivan. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is calendar items. Uh, Chief of Staff returns uh, August 20th. Uh, opening day institute is 8 a.m. at Main East High School Auditorium on the 21st. Opening day for students is August 22nd. Uh, our next regular meeting of the board is going to be September 4th, Tuesday, following uh, <coughs> Liberty. Is it correct that opening day is Tuesday? Yes. I question that too when I saw it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
reason being is it would have meant we would have had final exams. We would have ended the school year on a Tuesday, and final exams would have been on a Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. And it would have played, uh, his senior finals would have also been impacted. And uh, September 19th, uh, dinner and program for ISB North Cook. There's a fall dinner meeting. You want to make any comments on that? Uh, no, no comments at this time. It's going to be uh, uh, fall dinner meeting is always uh, more legislative focused. We're, we're, uh, we had invited Dan Rutherford to come and speak, and he had initially accepted the genetic conflict surface. So we're working on a substitute that could speak about the financial condition of the state. Very interesting topic, I think, before members and, and uh, school administrators. What day of the week is that, Eric? It's a Wednesday. Wednesday evening. I uh, would love to come by on Sunday and Monday. We could probably come there. And I could come on Wednesday night, so I too will not be able to make a motion. Great job. Look forward to the report. I will bring one. I don't have anything and I'll try to be there. We, we may potentially flip it with the educational one if uh, we don't find a suitable replacement of the educational one in the fall and like Dan the spring. <coughs> it's very fluid right now. Or you could just have Susan here. Again. Which was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, are there any other items to come before the board? Um, any other communications or public comments? Uh, we have any student discipline, Mr. Beats? Okay. Uh, we have review, of course, of minutes. And we have a point of employment. We have... Um, okay, a motion to go into closed session for review of closed session minutes, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, uh, setting a price for sale of lease of real estate, and uh, is there any other issues? Motion, please. So mm -hmm. second. Clerk, second. Color, please. So BC and F. BC and F. Please call the roll. McGrath? Aye. Graham? Aye. Blaze? Aye. Burke? Aye. Peller? Yes. Miller? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. 7.52 p.m. on 